You know, sometimes subverting the expectations is much easier than actually meeting the expectations. Since entering the world of K-pop, I've been noticing how Blackpink often has the infamous reputation of being some sort of rock bottom among K-pop girl groups in nearly every aspect possible, from the quality of music to their stage presence, dancing skills, vocal skills, and even the members' personalities. While observing this phenomenon, if you will, I've been slowly gathering thoughts and forming opinions on all of this. I am obviously not talking about fans of Blackpink necessarily. I am talking about the perception of K-pop listeners and media consumers who are not in the Blackpink fandom. Is the criticism fair? Let's talk. Buckle up guys, a no other fan is in your area. Blackpink is a force larger than the four members Jenny, Jisoo, Rose and Lisa themselves, with its power to attract the audience and even introduce international fans to the colorful and exciting realm of K-pop. The success and popularity of the group is absolutely undeniable, but popularity is a double-edged sword. And with Blackpink getting bigger and bigger, there are also more and more eyes watching and more opinions being thrown left and right. And yes, Blackpink has their many dedicated, sometimes even obsessed fans, but there are also K-pop consumers who struggle to find anything particularly impressive about the group, or at least impressive enough to justify Blackpink's immense popularity. We as consumers seem to naturally root for the underdogs and want to see them win and hold more popular and successful groups to a somewhat higher standard. And it doesn't surprise me. Well, if they are so popular, they sure must somehow deserve all that success, right? Being also a fan of less popular groups, I sometimes wish a group like Dreamcatcher could enjoy a half or even a quarter of Blackpink's success. But popularity and success in the music industry is just something else, and it's not something to blame idols for. Let's now take a look at different areas and see how the members generally perform, forgetting about Blackpink's popularity for a bit. Blackpink doesn't have the best reputation when it comes to vocals, and Rightly so. Even though it's true that Blackpink's music doesn't always do the best job of showcasing the members' vocals, they also are not the strongest vocalists. Both Jenny and Jisoo, who are lead vocalists, have tons of potential and some promising skills. but they need more time and training to develop as vocalists. While they're not on the level of lead vocalists like Sugi, Winter or Jang Yam, for sure, they are really not awful for K-pop standards. And there are quite a few lead vocalists who I consider weaker than Jin and Jisoo. I think Lisa, who's often labeled as the member who can't sing at all, does a pretty solid job for a sub-vocalist. <laughs> The member who, in my opinion, gets the most unnecessary criticism, sometimes hate, is for sure Rose, whose vocal skills are often looked down upon. And I really don't understand why. I remember making my K pop girl group's main vocalist ranking and putting Rose on a sixth place out of 10, by the way. And there were people 
acting like I placed her above Wendy of Red Velvet. <laughs> I don't think it's the right video for me to really get into Rosé's abilities, however, I consider her vocal skills to be relative to Mian of the Idol, who I see getting nothing but praise for her vocals. So. On the other hand, the girls more often than not sing and rap live, often with a backing track, true, but mics are on and they are being used. And while it absolutely doesn't seem like too much to ask, considering current K-pop trends in regards to the use of lip sync, it's worth mentioning. The girls generally perform well during encore stages and seem comfortable and confident. By the way, I'm telling you, this is one of the best encore stages I've ever seen. Stage presence. Another area where Blackpink faces quite a lot of criticism. Jenny, Jisoo, Rose, and Lisa are all very different but great performers. And while I don't question their stage presence individually, I don't think the members play off of each other as well as some other girl groups do in terms of their chemistry on stage. The shortcomings in their collective stage presence become more apparent when compared to groups like Itzy, Dreamcatcher or even Twice who have an exceptionally strong collective stage presence. I do believe Blackpink members generally work well together, however calling their stage presence top tier is inaccurate and ignorant. So there's a pretty general agreement that Blackpink's music 
is mediocre, but oddly attractive. The formula behind many of their songs has already been dissected and talked about enough for all of us to know it exists. I remember being very new to K-pop and learning about Blackpink's formula seemed almost frightening. I was like, oh my god, this is beyond crazy, like this is insane. And then I made myself familiar with a lot more K-pop artists and I figured out that having instrumental heavy covers with some onomatopoeias and single phrases or having one member open songs more often than others, etc. may be predictable and annoying, but all those are definitely not exclusive to Blackpink. I think the criticism K-pop listeners have towards Blackpink's music is mostly valid and justified, truly. And I really wish their music has been more solid overall. Especially considering how little music we are getting. Okay, take a deep breath. What I'd like to add is that following a certain formula isn't automatically detrimental to the quality of music. It really is about the execution. Pretty Savage, you know, this one. <laughs> follows the Blackpink's formula, yet it is arguably one of the best and most addicting songs in their discography. I personally don't have any issues with people calling Blackpink's music mediocre, but I also wish songs like Playing With Fire, As If It's Your Last, Kick It, Hope Not, Love To Hate Me, Love To Girls received more positive attention. So this one is totally subjective, but I find the girls to have one of the most charming and natural chemistries I've seen among the members of K-pop groups. Their interactions seem genuine and they remind me of how I am with some of my best friends and they always put a smile on my face. I absolutely love watching them and I'm not even trying to deny the bias I have here. To me, Blackpink is nothing without the members. Well, your visuals. Just to be clear, we are not ranking or evaluating physical appearance on this channel ever, so no. Oh, hell no! Uh -oh. Since I don't have pretty much any background in dance, I'm gonna need some help with this one. I'm pretty sure you are all familiar with K-pop dance rankings on YouTube. For my mini research, I've decided to use videos made by K-pop dance deep dives and for GG stands. Both creators rank idols using their own criteria and by giving them points. So I've calculated the average score for Blackpink and couple other girl groups so that we could kind of compare. Here are the results. This is mostly just for fun. I cannot evaluate their dancing skills by myself. So I tried to organize this in a way that seemed at least somewhat logical. I don't think anyone should ever be immune to criticism. I think criticism is good and necessary. I believe in commentary and consuming media through a critical lens. Observing non-fandom reception to Blackpink, it seems like subverting the expectations is much easier than actually meeting the expectations. I always encourage my viewers to enjoy things they enjoy in a positive and joyful way. And I'm looking forward to reading your thoughts and opinions on all of this. And now I can go back to desperately waiting for Blackpink's comeback. That is all I have for you guys in this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you for watching. And yeah, see you in my next one. For now, bye guys.